Case number one that you had to review was a 13-year-old boy with a left tongue lesion. It had actually grown quite rapidly because at the time of initial presentation, it was about 2.5 centimeters and yet was up to 3.2 at the time of surgery. There was no adenopathy, uh, but an excision was performed. This coronal CT demonstrates a enhancing lesion in the midline tongue. This is a low power of the specimen that you had to look at, and I think you can see that there is uh, areas of surface ulceration with a rich granulation type tissue present uh, throughout the lesion, although um, the neoplastic component can be seen uh, through the basal zone of each area. Let's go and look at some of these areas on higher power. Here you can see on higher power the surface epithelium coming into the tumor where you can see the neoplastic proliferation confined to this space in a very well-developed alveolar architectural appearance. On higher power, I think you can tell that they are very, very large polygonal cells with prominent small nucleoli present within the cytoplasm. Let's go and look at a different area now of this same tumor to see in this example that there are multiple neoplastic cells present in a very mixoid stromal component and yet still present in a little bit more solid appearance adjacent. When reviewed on high power, you can tell that there is abundant cytoplasm of these polygonal cells with easily identified mitotic figures. Here is a word cloud of the participant responses shaken up in a Erlenmeyer flask. Let's discuss the differential diagnostic considerations. When I think of this type of tumor, a very broad differential uh, comes to mind. However, I've tried to limit it to those things that occur primarily in the oral cavity. And so with that in mind, granular cell tumor, crystal storing histiocytosis, hybronoma, alveolar softpot sarcoma, rhabdomyoma, rhabdomyosarcoma, and oncocytoma are the ones that really need to be considered within this particular setting. So why don't we start off with granular cell tumor? Granular cell tumor is a benign tumor that is composed of well demarcated to poorly demarcated plump granular cells. Um, fairly wide age range at initial presentation and women are affected a little bit more commonly. And the head and neck is by far and away the most common site with about 70% of the lesions involving the oral cavity. It's usually quite poorly encapsulated with these plump and polygonal eosinophilic cells arranged in a syncytial architecture with very small to dark and vesicular nuclei. I think everyone recognizes the pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia that is usually identified in these tumors. Of course, S100s and CD68 is usually immunoreactive in these tumors. On physical examination, the surface epithelium is usually intact, but showing quite a few papillations, as you can see in this example. The gross specimen in this case demonstrates an area of smooth central portion with the tumor, while a myriad of papillations are present in the background, all examples of pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. There is truly a remarkable surface squamous pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia that extends all the way down to the base of the lesion, and you'd actually be quite hard pressed to identify that there are actually neoplastic lesional cells present within this particular space. As you will notice on higher power, the squamous epithelium is still present, but now you will notice myriad granules present in the cytoplasm that are quite eosinophilic, demonstrated in the background. In this advancing edge of the tumor, you're able to see that there is involvement out into the adjacent skeletal muscle, and yet the region of granular cells are still quite easily identified, even at this magnification. Perineural involvement is quite common. Here you can see a nerve present over here. And in fact, there's quite a similarity between the nerves and the tumor cells as each of them has granular cytoplasm. But the polygonal quality in eosinophilic cytoplasm is usually quite characteristic of the lesion. With S100 being performed here to give you a strong both nuclear and cytoplasmic reaction in the neoplastic cells with the nerve serving as an internal the next lesion in the differential diagnostic consideration is localized crystal storing histiocytosis. And as the name suggests, it is an abnormality of histiocytes usually related to some sort of immunoglobulin. As you can tell, it usually presents in adults and so wouldn't probably be considered within the differential of this case. Most often in the head and neck, and more than 90% of them are associated with some sort of lymphoproliferative or plasma cell dyscrasia. It usually shows large polygonal cells with a background of fibrosis and lymphoid elements, and then of course, um, crystals that are either scant to sheaf-like in quality. 
being positive with CD68 and then polyclonal with the light chains or immunoglobulins. This is just a sheet-like architectural arrangement, and I think that you can tell in this example uh, there are native minor mucoceros glands present in the background as well as the lymphoid element. Going to higher power, again, you can tell that there is a vaguely crystalline appearance to the cytoplasm. However, when you go onto high power, these sheets of crystalline type material are very, very easily identified. And go to uh, yet another example, you can tell that they really do have a remarkable sheaf-like quality. They will be positive with CD68, as you can tell in this example. And as already, as you can see with the kappa and lambda, they are strongly positive with both markers and therefore do not have any polyclonality. When one looks at it on electron microscopy, you can see these gorgeous crystalline structures, as you can tell from this photomicrograph uh, shared with me from Dr. Leon Barnes. Hibernoma is a benign neoplasm of vestigial fat, and as you can tell, it does affect young adults, slightly more often in men, although it does tend to involve the shoulders, neck, and scapular region. There are four different histologic types, although the lobular one, which is a combination of round to oval cells with granular eosinophilic cytoplasm, very prominent borders are by far and away the most common. As you can tell, they would react with S100. The cut surface is brown and homogeneous, as you would expect from a brown fat type lesion. And when you look at the histology, you can tell that there is an alternating pattern of dark and light cells, which when reviewed on high power, you can see that there is a very nice microvesicular pattern to the cytoplasm, as is frequent in hibernoma. The next lesion to consider within this differential is rhabdomyoma. As you know, they are divided into cardiac and non-cardiac, and then based on histology into fetal, adult, and genital. And clearly it is the adult rhabdomyoma that we're speaking of in the context of the present case. However, they usually affect older patients with men affected much more commonly than women. They do have a rust brown type appearance and will have sheets and lobules of closely packed polygonal cells separated by a fibrovascular stroma with abundant granulate evacuated cytoplasm with the vacuoles creating a spider web type appearance. They would be positive with a variety of muscle markers. When you look at this, you can tell the lobular appearance with a light brown tinctural quality. And when you see it in the tongue here, I think you can tell the skeletal muscle and these lobules of neoplastic cells. The vacuoles in the cytoplasm create a retraction artifact, and this retraction artifact gives the areas of spider web type appearance. When looked at on higher power, the retraction artifact is very well developed in this example. Cross striations are usually easily identified as these small linear appearances within the cytoplasm, and they certainly can be highlighted with the phosphatunxid acid hematoxylin stain. Along a similar vein, rhabdomyosarcoma certainly needs to be considered as a primitive soft tissue malignancy in this location, since the head and neck is one of the most common locations. The embryonal type is usually seen in younger patients while the alveolar type is seen in adults. However, the alveolar type is what fits into our differential here with primitive mesenchymal cells arranged in a dilapidated brick wall appearance as they collapse from the alveolar spaces comprised of rhabdomyoblasts, cytoplasmic eosinophilia, and eccentric nuclei. They will, of course, also be reactive with muscle markers, and I will point out to positive with keratin and synaptophysin in a fair number of cases. When reviewed in uh, high power, you can tell that there is an alveolar architecture here with clinging cells at the periphery and the dilapidated cells into the center. When viewed on high power, rhabdomyoblasts are easily identified with this eccentric eosinophilic cytoplasm pulled off from the nucleus. Desmond is strongly positive in the cytoplasm of most of the uh, uh, neoplastic cells while the myogenin and myoD1 would also help to confirm the myogenic nature of this neoplasm. Importantly, though, synaptophysin seen on the left as well as cytokeratin on the right is often positive within rhabdomyosarcoma and brings to mind the fact that one must perform a panel of immunohistochemical studies in order to be able to accurately classify these neoplasms. Of course, the PAX3 or PAX7 translocated with FOXO1 can be easily detected with a fish, and here you can tell a fish break-apart probe for FOXO1 in this example of an alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. 
an oncocytoma is a benign neoplasm made up of cells that basically have abnormal mitochondria filling their cytoplasm. So this is not a lesion that develops in children. It is much older adults and usually in the major salivary glands. And so I will not spend much time on it other than to say it can be arranged in a variety of different patterns and specifically related to the high number of mitochondria with distinctive cell borders and a very uniform otherwise appearance. A mahogany brown appearance on cut surface with a central area of stellate scar formation. Here you can tell that it is quite well separated from the adjacent salivary gland parenchyma. And when you look at it, you can tell that it is oncocytically altered cells forming slight glandular appearance in this example, while a more sheet-like appearance here with degenerated background stroma. The granular nature of the cytoplasm and oncocytic appearance is usually quite easy to detect. And of course, in this setting, um, some of the immunohistochemical studies can be performed with either P40 or P63, highlighting some of the um, background base cells. But most importantly, electron microscopy here illustrating that it is just filled with a myriad of um, mitochondria. We finally get to the diagnosis of alveolar soft part sarcoma, which is the diagnosis for this unknown case. It is a rare neoplasm, but it is actually quite common in children when it occurs in the head and neck area. And in that setting, about 25% of them occur in the tongue and oral cavity. While there is a wide age range, there is a strong predilection for adults where females are affected a little bit more commonly than other uh, patients. Here you can tell on imaging a very well-defined lesion involving the tongue where here it is an ulcerated surface area of this young patient. They usually present with a fairly small size. This is restricted due to the anatomic location and quite often vascular invasion will be present, although it doesn't affect overall prognosis. It has a cut brown surface, which is quite similar to many of the other lesions that I've already discussed here this morning. Vascular invasion is easily identified in these areas with the rest of the alveolar pattern immediately adjacent to it. And usually there is a multinodular growth with an organoid or nested pattern, sometimes more solid in the earlier lesions and then organoid as it becomes more dehesive in younger patients. This results in a pseudoalveolar pattern in the center. Here you can tell an intact surface epithelium with the lobules of neoplastic cells deep in the stroma where here it is separated by a very well-developed fibrovascular stroma. This is much more of a solid pattern with the large neoplastic cells present within it, but over time, the central portion of the tumor becomes dehesive, creating a dilapidated look appearance. There are usually um, very large polygonal cells, one or more vesicular nuclei, prominent um, nucleoli, but tends to have um, mild pleomorphism, scant mitoses, and very rare this high power view demonstrates several large cells with a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and very large prominent nucleoli. Here is a very large cell with a low nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm. Several studies can augment the diagnosis. A PAS highlights Z-band type material, while there are a variety of different immunophenotypic studies that can be performed. So there you can tell the PAS highlighting the granules the MyoD1 gives a peculiar cytoplasmic rather than nuclear reaction, while the NSE gives a variable cytoplasmic reactivity. Curiously, the vimentin is not reactive in the neoplastic cells, although strongly highlighting the supporting framework. And then, of course, TFD3 is the marker that is quite helpful in this particular setting. Importantly, TFE3 is a nucleus stain and a member of the helix loop helix family. However, it is not specific for alveolar soft part sarcoma. And as you can see, granular cell tumor and paraganglioma are two tumors in our differential that would be considered. In that particular circumstance, performing RT-PCR may help in confirming the diagnosis. Alveolar soft part sarcoma are usually indolent and slow growing, but there is a high metastatic potential increasing with the age at initial presentation. Therefore, long-term follow-up is required, while a better prognosis is seen in patients with smaller tumors, as well as a young age at initial presentation. You may wonder why I'm ending with a photograph in my wife and I with Charo on a cruise from a long time ago. Well, 
I try to create mnemonics, and in this particular case, if you take each of the tumors in the differential and the first letter of each of them, you would obviously in this case get a Grammy for Charo. Have a great day.